So I'm out in the garage doing some testing. The goal today is to answer a question that's as old as subwoofers themselves. Are you better off with one big subwoofer, a whole bunch of small subwoofers, or something in between? I'm gonna start off by plugging in the DATs, doing some sweeps to get the tuning frequency of these three enclosures. Then we're gonna grab a measurement mic and measure the frequency response and the distortion and do some in-car SPL testing. So DATS is pretty straightforward. To find out your tuning frequency, you just run a sweep right here, impedance sweep. There we go, we get a sweep. A tuning frequency of 31 roughly hertz for our 12 inch subwoofer. One thing about the DATS, it's really consistent <laughs> in that it never gives me the tuning frequency I was shooting for. I use a combination of WinISD and a spreadsheet with my own formulas to build my boxes. And when I do a DAT sweep, they always come in a couple of hertz lower. So what I'll have to remember to do is to shoot for a couple of hertz higher to get the tuning frequency that I want. I think this should have been tuned a bit higher, but I like the way it sounds. Okay, we got two more to test. Let's do that. This is the double eight box. Look at that. <laughs> so these two things are within human error with the cursor on the mouse uh, of each other. So what we have are two boxes that are for all practical purposes, really close to the same. And these boxes were designed with that intention. Both boxes have a front firing subwoofer and a side port, and both boxes are very nearly the same in airspace. I forget the exact airspace. I'll be sure to pop it up on the screen or something right here. This last box is a different beast in several different ways. Now the interesting thing here is that the tuning frequency is very nearly the same as the other enclosures. It's within a Hertz. The idea is to create three enclosures that are very similar to get an apples to apples comparison. A single 12 versus a pair of eights versus four six and a halfs. They're all tuned to about the same and they're all about the same size. They've all got a front firing subwoofer and a side firing port. But then this box right here with the four six and a half diverges from the other two in two very important ways. And I'm not talking about plywood versus MDF and the crazy color scheme of the four, six and a half box. That crazy color scheme was a bit of an experiment. I'm not 100% sure that I would repeat it. I made this box short and wide. It should be able to fit under the rear seat of an F-150 and it would definitely fit under most trucks with a seat lift. So the overall shape is a little bit different plus the type of port tuning is a bit different. This is what's known as an extended base shelf design. You can see the the impact of that design in the impedance sweep right here on your screen. Look at these two peaks. If the subwoofer free air resonance and the port tuning frequency are exactly the same, then these two will have the exact same height. And when the low frequency peak is shorter than the high frequency peak, then the port tuning frequency is less than the free air resonance of the subwoofers. Which you can see is the case for all three of these enclosures, but the magnitude of that difference is exaggerated with the smaller subwoofers. Here's what that looks like in WinISD. The subwoofers themselves are making most of the sound in this region here, and then after the subwoofers roll off, the port starts to take over. It's always important to make sure you've got a big enough port so you don't get any chuffing, but it's even more important with a design like this, where the port is the only reason why you could hit those low notes. More on that later. That's called foreshadowing, y'all. One more cool thing before we leave these plots. These plots let you visualize impedance rise, also known as box rise. You can clearly see that the resistance changes as a function of the frequency. And even though all three of these enclosures are wired to one ohm, none of them ever actually gets all the way down to one ohm. Box rise is not something you should worry about unless you're an SPL competitor. For the typical people who just want to enjoy their music at reasonably loud volumes, it's not something you should ever care about. Before we do some more testing, let's take a look at some of the stats. It's gonna help us understand the performance differences between these subwoofers. We can see right here that quite obviously the cone area for the 12 inch subwoofer is much bigger than the cone area for the others. And they say that cone area is king, but it's more than just cone area because you also have to look at the X max. That's the distance the cone can travel while still maintaining linearity. Not only do we get more cone area with the 12 inch subwoofer, the 12 inch subwoofer has more X 
Max. Not much more than the 8, but quite a bit more than the 6.5. And, and if you take the X Max and the cone area and convert them to the same units and multiply them together, you have this number right here, VD. VD is the volume displaced by the subwoofer with one forward stroke all the way out to X Max. And quite obviously, just what you would expect, the 12 inch subwoofer has a whole lot more VD, but it's more than just that. The bigger subwoofer can handle more power. So the six and a half inch subwoofer, this is a Savard Wrap six and a half. It's rated for 250 watts. And the eight and the 12 I'm looking at are also Savard subwoofers from the Wrap series. The eight can handle a little bit more power, but that 12 can handle triple the amount of power that the six and a half can handle. So the six and a half itself is at a massive disadvantage relative to that 12 inch subwoofer. And it's at a slight disadvantage relative to the eighth. And per our previous discussion, the six and a half inch subwoofer has a much higher resonant frequency compared to the eight and the 12. Another important thing to look at is the sensitivity. This tells us how loud we can get with one watt of power. The six and a half and the eight both have very similar sensitivity numbers, but once again, that 12 has a higher sensitivity number. So for the most part, that 12 should be able to easily outclass that six and a half by a pretty wide margin. But we're not comparing a single six and a half to a 12, we're comparing four six and a halves to a 12. So why don't we just multiply all the information I just showed you by the number of drivers. This changes things just a little bit. Two of those eight inch drivers are gonna have just slightly less cone area than 112. And it turns out that three of the six and a half inch drivers have about the same cone area as one of the 12. So four six and a half is going to give you more cone area than a single 12. But the 12 has more X max. When you look at the volume displaced, you can see that the four six and a halves and the two eights are going to displace a very similar amount of volume. And the 12 is going to displace a lot more volume. But there's more to it than just that. Four six and a halves can handle a thousand watts of power, whereas two of the eights can handle 600 watts and the 12 can only handle 750 watts. The way sensitivity works, every time you double the cone area, you add three decibels of sensitivity. So four six and a halves will be more sensitive than two eights and two eights are going to slightly edge out one 12. And then there's the part that I've got shaded out that we'll talk about <laughs> later in the video. That's going to be an important factor in your decision making. Okay, I've got Room EQ Wizard set up on the laptop. I'm going to go ahead and check levels and then do a sweep to get an idea of the frequency response of the 12 inch. You probably hear the fan from the JP23 running. My only beef with the JP23 is the fan. But having said that, it's not louder than the air conditioner. So when I'm driving, I can't tell it's even on. So let's check the levels. All right, levels are good. So we're gonna measure. All right, we'll save that measurement and we'll sit down and compare the measurements for all of the subwoofers. So instead of making you sit and watch all of those sweeps, what I did was I swapped out subwoofers, set levels, so everything was at the same level according to Room EQ Wizard. And this is the response for the Savard 12. Let's add the response for the Dual 8s. And what you're going to notice is that above 70 hertz, 75 or so, the 8s were a smidge louder. The 12 outperforms the 8 down to about 25 hertz, and then the 8 was actually a little bit louder going down to 20 hertz. Honestly, not sure why that happened, but it doesn't seem like these are too far apart. They're 5 dB apart at 30 hertz. 7 dB apart at 40 hertz. Both really seem to kind of be behaving the same way. Let's add in the six and a half. And the six and a half between 80 and about 35 hertz seems to be the worst performer of the bunch. Seems to be doing a little bit better than the eight at any point below about 35 hertz. These are the distortion numbers. I'm not really familiar with this plot, so I'm not sure 100% what to do with these numbers. If I'm reading it correctly, the four six and a halves are at 0.21 5%, so well under 1%. The dual eights are at 0.324%, while the 12 is at 0.618%, which means that the eight is cleaner than the 12, and the six and a half is cleaner 
than the 8. Again, this isn't my area of expertise. Anyone watching who's more familiar with the distortion measurement in room EQ, feel free to jump in the comments and tell me what you see. Now I need to set up all my cameras for an SPL test. Hang on a second. One thing that I want to find out is how well all three of these perform at 600 watts, which is the most you really should be throwing in a pair of 8s. And how do the 6.5s do at 750 watts, which is the power rating for the single 12? And to go along with that, since you can throw more power at the 12 or the four six and a halfs, well, that give us more SPL. So what I've done here for these tests is I've tried my best to synchronize the footage and I'll throw up some approximate numbers up on the screen when we hit 600, 750, and 1,000. So we're looking at 2 dB difference between all three options. One thing about these Savard subwoofers, they are conservatively underrated. At one point, I accidentally threw 1100 watts at the 12, but I got 131.5 dB out of it. Now taking all of these measurements together from the DATS and Ruby Q Wizard and the SPL test, the data is all close enough that it's really too close to call. Before I give my subjective opinion, there's one more very important thing we need to look at. If you buy these direct from Savard using the discount code down in the video description, here is what you will pay at the time of filming. Now the data does show that the four small subs can keep up with a single larger sub. So if you find yourself in a situation where the big sub won't fit like under the back seat of a truck, then you should absolutely go with the four smaller subwoofers and you will get a good result. Every bit as good as a single 12, but you're going to spend a lot more money. Plus you'll need a bigger amp and you'll need to be very careful when buying or building an enclosure to fit underneath those back seats. More on that in just a second. As for my subjective opinion, the 12 played lower to my ears than the Dual 8s, but the Dual 8s sounded cleaner. I'm constantly swapping subs in and out of the truck for testing and filming and I find myself going for the Dual 8 box for daily use, even though the 12 does hit harder. Now the Quad 6.5 box is a completely different story. My goal for the box was to keep the same general configuration, sub forward and port to the side, but make something that could in theory fit beneath the back seat of an extended cab pickup truck. To build something that would fit, I had to compromise on the port cross section and the six and a half inch enclosure chuffs. Now I knew it would do that beforehand, but I built it like that anyway because I wanted to hear for myself how it would sound. So if you need to go with the smaller subs to make them fit, make sure you pay very close attention to your enclosure. You don't want to spend all that cash for a system that chuffs. Click right here to see the build logs for these three boxes and click right down here to subscribe. Before I go, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. I couldn't do this without y'all. With an extra shout out to $25 and up patrons, Johnny, Timothy, Jonathan, JD, America, and Bo. 